Punto Vigates. Welcome to episode 2 of Ask Hair Oberst. And today we are looking at the wonderful Tier 6 Cromwell tank. Now, the Cromwell came out in 1944. Uh, it was in time for uh, D-Day, and in its development, it originally was mounting the six-pounder, QF six-pounder gun, was the gun they intended to use, which is a 57-millimeter gun. However, uh, in line with what was being planned and everything, the invasion of Europe, uh, the, the British wanted to be able to use uh, the American, they wanted to standardize the ammunition being used, make it a little bit easier to uh, make sure that the gun, that the uh, tanks were equipped and could be supplied, and they didn't want to be carrying a ton of different ammo types. So they thought, let's standardize it and let's come up with a gun that can use the American 75 millimeter rounds, which there were tons of them in England at the time. So they developed this gun here, the 75 millimeter gun Mark V. Basically a slightly longer version, longer gun, a little bit longer barrel than what was on the American Sherman, which gave the gun a bit better uh, velocity. However, the gun still lost when it came to uh, AP rounds. It lost penetration. As you can see here, um, the average penetration with standard AP rounds in the game is 110 versus 91 here. And that's historically uh, accurate. The six-pounder gun, which was basically a 57-millimeter weapon, uh, had superior armor-piercing ability than the 75-millimeter uh, gun had. Uh, so, while it gained a bit, with a G for infantry support, um, it had a better AG, AG round, a bigger AG round than the six pounder. It lost out um, in its ability to be able to pierce the armor of enemy tanks, especially when it was going to be coming up against Tigers and Panthers. Panzer IV are a bit different, gun more inadequate to deal with the Panzer IV, but uh, if the tank came across a Tiger or a Panther, well, then you got to use the mobility, which fortunately for the Cromwell, it had mobility. Now, famous example, uh, when you're talking 1944 and, you know, the Allied tanks versus the German Tiger, German Panther. There was one thing many people know about uh, Michael Whitman and the battle at Biller's Volkage. And at that battle, when Whitman took his tiger into the village of Biller's Volkage, there was actually one of these. <laughs> One of these Cromwells was parked at a side street, and Whitman's tank went right by them. And the sad thing is, that tank could have taken Whitman out. Sad thing was, when the commander looked to, you know, hey, Gunner, you know, there's a tank coming down the road, you know, we got to get this guy. <laughs> Commander looked to the uh, for his gunner. His gunner was outside the tank taking a piss at the time. So, so they missed a golden opportunity. Uh, they could have killed Whitman there. 
because it would have been a point blank range shot at the side armor of the tiger which is what ended up happening to kill Whitman in his final uh, battle uh, I think it was like a month later or we you know so many weeks later uh, where it was actually a Canadian uh, Sherman with a 75 millimeter gun that uh, hit him at somewhere around it was less it was around 600 yards away hit the side armor the shell went into the engine uh, compartment set the tank on fire and uh, the tiger blew up the turret blew off and it killed Whitman and his crew but Anyway, back to the guns. Um, so, in Tier 6, another thing about this tank is that it was the first of the British tanks to come out that was really reliable. The crews loved this tank, where many British crews hated their earlier tanks, uh, like the Crusader uh, was a big one. The Crusader... It was a great tank, well-designed tank, had a terrible engine. Uh, they were using an engine that was developed in World War One during World War I, uh, in America, called the Liberty Engine, and it was uh, massively exported uh, during the First World War. It powered a lot of American aircraft, like the Curtis Jenny used the Liberty Engine. And uh, after the war, there were surplus stocks of this thing all over the place so in the 1930s when uh the crusade the the various british cruiser tanks were being developed the liberty was kind of a stock and trade engine for those and in the case of the crusader the problem was the engine just couldn't handle being jolted around and the vibrations of the tank moving over terrain and stuff like that just made the engine unreliable especially at speed that's why in the game the crusader uh as a light tank doesn't have the speed of other light tanks it runs more like a medium it's got decent speed but it's not as quick as as other light tanks which is why it doesn't get light tank uh, matchmaking um, but the reason it tra it could go faster than that and the reason that it goes at the speed it does is because the engine was governed uh, to keep the RPMs lower to for reliability uh, reasons to make keep the tank in action now the funny thing is in the desert uh, the first thing that Crusader crews did was take the governors off to run the tanks as quickly as possible. They didn't give a damn about the maintenance people and the trouble they have to have keeping the tanks uh, serviceable. What they cared about was having the mobility. So when this tank came out, the, uh, the crews were really... The tank crews were really enthusiastic about it. Now, the engine that the Crusader uses is a detuned uh, Rolls-Royce Merlin engine. The Merlin is the engine that powered the famous British fighters like the Hurricane, the Spitfire. Uh, it ended up in the P-51 Mustang. Uh, became so popular that... Um, uh, America bought, uh, Packard, Packard bought uh, a license to be able to produce Merlins in the United States uh, for uh, the uh, North American aviation for their uh, P-51s. And that. so they detuned it, renamed it the Meteor, put it into uh, the Cromwell, and it also was put into the Comet, and uh, was also put into the uh, Centurion. And in this tank, it was a 600, about a 600 uh, or 650 horsepower engine, 
see what the game, well, the game says 650. I think the standard, it was like 600 horsepower engine. Gave it great speed, used Christie's suspension, and uh, in the game, you primarily use this tank as a very aggressive uh, medium tank, keeping it on the move. Uh, you can use it as a scout. Its speed allows you to do that in the game. Uh, so it makes a very good scout tank as well. Even though it doesn't get the scout, the uh, light tank uh, concealment uh, while on the move uh, that light tanks get, it still with its speed makes it a great, a great tank to use as an aggressive scout vehicle. Um, now, in talking about the guns, as I said, the six pounder was the initial gun they were going to use. They changed to the 75 because, in getting ready for D Day, they wanted to standardize the ammunition. Um, the top gun in this tank, the 75 millimeter Vickers HV, was a tank they was a, a tank was a gun they intended to try and put in. In real life, they weren't able to do it. They couldn't get the gun to fit into the turret the way they can in the game. So they ended up changing the turret. They basically uh, took a modified version of the turret used on the TOG heavy tank. They lengthened the hull of the tank and then they came out with what was called the Challenger, which they could mount the 17-pounder in, which this gun here is basically, a, this version of the 75-millimeter gun is basically a modified version of the 17-pounder uh, British anti-tank gun that became famous in tanks like the Firefly and uh, Challenger, stuff like that. So anyway, in looking at these guns, though, Rhonda brought up a really interesting question. What would be the best gun to use in Strongholds? So, looking at the guns, one of the things that you get with the Tier 5 gun, you get a way better rate of fire. Now, here it's slightly over four rounds. However, with a gun rammer, as you can see here, it says 15.4 rounds for the tier 6 gun. But I actually get 17.8 rounds per minute. Now that's a combination of the medium tank, medium caliber tank gun rammer and the skill of my gunner, which helps. So, if I was to mount the tier 5 75 millimeter gun, this 20 uh, rounds a minute would go up to 23.3, I believe, uh, rounds per minute. So that's five rounds. Uh, five rounds more per minute than what I would get with the top tier gun. Now, the downside is using standard ammo, you'll have a difficult time dealing with tier 6 heavy tanks and strongholds. Um, tanks like the KV-85 have 90 millimeter side armor. So, unless you're hitting that armor flush, flush on with your shells, if you're hitting it at an angle, it's going to bounce. You're going to be bouncing shots. So you're not going to be effective. So to use this gun definitely means in stronghold games, you would have to run all premium ammunition, gold rounds, to be able to be effective against every tank you could, you could come up against. Uh, now, the nice thing about the Top Gun 
of course, is that you can go into strongholds with standard ammunition. And the standard AP round is more than enough to deal with any tank it would meet in tier 6 strongholds. Of course, in random games, that's a different story. You can meet tanks as, uh, up to tier 8. Or if you fail platoon, you know, higher than that. So, <laughs> so in a tier 8 game, if, if you're going to be in a tier 8 game, you want to have some premium rounds to get that. As you can see, it's a big jump from 145 uh, average penetration to 202 millimeters of penetration, which means it keeps your tank effective. Now, in a tier 8 game, there's even some heavy tanks in tier 8 that you're not going to be able to pen them head on. You're going to have to flank them, even with premium rounds, in order to be effective. Now, as you can see, my own loadout, this tank, particular tank, I run with all APCR. And, you know, that's a big thing, of course, you see people in the game all the time, oh, you're a gold round user. Well, these are historical rounds. And it's your choice whether you want to spend the credits or the gold if you're not using credits. As you can see here, I use credits to pay for my premium rounds. I use gold to pay for my premium consumables. But uh, the whole idea is to be to be effective for your team, and so I always laugh at the people that that whine and cry about, oh, you're using premium rounds. Um, it's my choice to use them; they're available for everybody, and I highly suggest that all of your tanks you should always carry a, at least a few premium rounds in case you wind up in a high tier game or you wind up in a game where you're low tier or you wind up in a game where you're dealing with a heavy tank that your standard rounds cannot pen. Uh, as you can see here, I have the Cromwell B, which is a premium tank, premium version of the Cromwell. Now this gun is actually identical to the um, gun in the standard Cromwell, as I'll show you here. They look different, but it's actually the same gun. Same rate of fire, same average penetration, depending on the type of ammunition used, same damage, same dispersion, same aiming time and same weight. It's the exact same gun. Just looks different. Uh, as you can see here, here's the standard Cromwell. Here's the premium Cromwell. But it's actually the same, the same gun. And as you can see with this particular tank, I use a mixture. I have 30 standard rounds, I have 34 ABCR rounds. And that's because usually when I run this tank, I'm usually always in a tier 7 or tier 8 game. So, that's why I carry um, a mixed loadout of shells. Some people would say you should carry a few AG, but Really, AG isn't that effective with, with this gun, so I just prefer to have the two AP. And really, I should do that with this tank. I should, I should mix the rounds, but I just haven't gotten around to doing it. And uh, with some tanks, because of the rate of fire and that, I don't want to be typing, the, you know, looking and hunting a key down to switch rounds. It's just, hey, I know what I'm shooting. And again, like I say, if you want to call me a gold spammer or whatever, I, I don't care. I mean, I play games to win them. And so long as I'm not cheating, I'm happy. I don't want to, you know, if this, this is part of game mechanics. They allow us to have these rounds. These rounds did exist 
historically so, I use them. And um, anyway, another question that Rhonda brought up about this vehicle uh, was that, do you have to have a crew with a lot of skills? And I guess she had read somewhere that that people were saying that you should have uh, a crew, I guess, like this one with at least three sets of skills. And honestly, I'm going to say, no, I've never found that. And all the time I've played this tank, I've never found uh, a, a reason to have uh, a multi-skill crew. I haven't noticed any, uh, you know, a huge difference between being effective and being ineffective. Uh, this is the original crew. And... Um, they uh, started out, I start, started them out with 100%. They were working on one skill, working on their first set of skills. But they were all at 100%. And I think that's what you need. Uh, I mean, with any tank, if you're running with a 50% crew or a 75% crew, where they're not actually fully trained in the tank, of course you're going to see a difference. The tank will not go as quick won't turn as well, uh, the rate of fire will be lower, that's the penalties they put in the game until your your crew reaches 100% of their skill level. And uh, once they're at 100% in doing their jobs, then the tank performs at its best, the tank's going to run at top speed, everything else. Uh, there are things you can put on the tank to enhance that. If you don't have a 100% crew, then I would suggest one of the things you put on the vehicle, at least until the crew is um, at 100%, add improved ventilation. Because it adds 5%, not only to the skills, but to this percentage here. So if they're at 50%, well, now they're at 55. If they're at 75%, that means they're at 80% of being able to do their job, the driver's driving job, whatever. So that's where that comes in. Now, as you see here, I have medium caliber tank gun rammer on the tank. Um, I suggest you put a gun rammer on every tank that can have a gun rammer. Uh, this should be a given because it uh, decreases the loading time. And you definitely want that, no matter what the tank is. If you can decrease your loading time, that's a good thing. So that's a, that's a, a piece of kit you should have. All right. I use the enhanced gun laying drive. Sadly, at tier 6, it's not like the tier 6 uh, Easy 8 Sherman or the Sherman Jumbo at tier 6 where you can get a gun stabilizer, um, which would really make this tank overpowered if it had gun stabilization for firing on the move. Um, but since I don't have that, for any, this is another kind of must have. The enhanced gun laying drive uh, gives, uh, makes your aiming speed faster. Okay, you'll, the gun, you'll be able to bring your, you know, shrink your uh, gun circle, you know, your aiming circle quicker with the enhanced gun laying drive. So this is another thing that I really say you should have on most of your tanks. Uh, if not all of them, unless you have the choice between this and a vertical stabilizer, which there's no vertical stabilizer here. Let's see, is there one on this one? I yes. Here you go. This is a vertical stabilizer. Now, what this does is it keeps that, that dispersion circle smaller during movement and tur turret rotation. doesn't increase the speed of your aiming. But it kind of does, it, 
because it's, it's already shrinking the, you know, keeping the uh, circle smaller to begin with, but it's definitely something to have uh, for uh, while you're mo on the move. Now, in a way, for this particular tank, I, mm, maybe, maybe I'd be better off with the, uh, in, uh, the, uh, the enhanced gun lane drive instead, since most of the time I'm stopped when I'm shooting with the Firefly. Firefly is one of those mediums that really should be played more like a tank destroyer. But, uh, be that as it may, I, I, I like the vertical stabilizer because while it doesn't say it, it actually does do the... Um, gun lane drive, it actually works like a gun lane drive as well, so uh, it's definitely the better thing to have of the two items, but you can't get it on this tank, so use the enhanced gun lane drive. Now here, some people might say put binocs, but you have to remember, binocs only work when you're stopped. Coated optics work all the time. They don't give you 25%, they only give you a 10% increase to your range, but that's all the time. So, I always say with your scout tanks, if you're building light tanks, uh, or building um, medium tanks, coated optics, for the most part, is what you should have. This is what you should be using. But, but excuse me, binocs are more for... TDs, tanks that you use more like TDs, and uh, sometimes you can use them on heavies, but really when it comes to heavies, heavies are the brawlers, so you'll see very few of my heavies that are using any kind of optical equipment. Usually with heavies, I'll put uh, improved ventilation instead. Or if it's needed, something like a, a wet ammo rack or a small liner. But most of my mediums are laid out this way. Now, when it does come to skills, when you are looking at, at skills, um, you must always look at how, when does the perk work? Like here, six cents. Six cents only comes into effect after it reaches 100%. So usually this is not a full, uh, a first skill pick for me. Um, I actually re, you know, spent the gold and reset the skill so that I could get this. When I started out, first skill that I choose for a commander is recon to increase your your view range all right your maximum view range so the reason why is as it says here at the bottom it says skill comes into effect after the training starts the effect increases with skill level so that means you get one percent increase when you first start you know when you get one percent and as that goes up, like right now, it's at 92%, so I've got a 92% increase in the visibility of what the tank commander can see. Now, once this got to 100%, then I hit reset, which you would do like this, and then you have to choose, and of course I choose the maximum, uh, pay the 200 gold, and switch out recon for six cents which warns the commander uh if he's been spotted warns you if you've been if your tank has been spotted in battle and then just i just started retraining recon again uh, the same thing here this is uh, the gunner dead eyes skill that only comes into effect after it reaches 100 percent. so the first skill that i got for the gunner was snapshot Worked that up to 100%, then reset, got dead eye, dead eye, and then started retraining snapshot again. 
And there are all different kinds of skills, but again, you have to read them. One skill that's tricky is this one here, Brothers in Arms. If you're going to go for Brothers in Arms, you must start each crew member. And again, this is one that I would rather tell you to do a reset on. You know, like start out here. I could have done this. I could have gone, gotten the crew through their all their first uh, their first perk, hit the reset, and then instead of this, then I would have uh, given every crew member brothers in arms. Because as you see, this particular skill only works uh, after you get 100%, it has to be at 100%, and every crew member has to have it in order for it to work. Another one that they don't really say that is concealment. Concealment is, uh, yes, you can give it to one crew member, and it will work. But I have found that when every crew member is trained in concealment, it works much better. So that's another one that while it doesn't say you have to have everybody trained in, I found that that skill works better when everybody's trained in. But the gunner, most of the skills as you can see here, uh, armor works all the uh, from the moment you start training. Designated the target is another one has to be at 100%. And designated target is kind of, I would say, uh, the last skill I would I would think to, to even bother getting for, for the gunner. There's plenty of other skills that I'd rather have him have before this. Armor is a good one. Uh, all of these basic skills here are good. But this one here is not, at least to me, it's not something that you have to have. All right, we get on to the driver. First skill that I always go with for the driver is off-road driving. So this is one guy I didn't have to uh, retrain him. This was his first skill right here. And he got to 100%. Once I got him to 100% there, I started the smooth ride skill. Now, here are the other ones, controlled impact. That's if you're planning on ramming people all the time. Um, preventative maintenance is a good one. Now, this is one that uh, only comes into effect when it gets to 100%, and it definitely helps out uh, lowering the chance of a fire. Clutch braking um, is another good one, and this one starts working the moment you start training on it. So this is another good skill, but these are the first two driving skills you want right here. And once this is up to 100%, then either I'll go for preventive, I'm going to probably go for preventative maintenance, get that keep this at 100 percent and then restart training the smooth ride again is what i'll most probably do here with the uh, driver radio operator current skills he's got situational awareness now this you should always get when the commander has recon situational Awareness works, it enhances um, the commander's recon, so they work together. If, if you're going to have the commander with recon, which I highly suggest is the first skill for the commander, this should be the first skill for your radio operator. Um, then I went with signal boosting for the second skill. His other skills call for vengeance. Eh. You know, you all know how this game works. You know, it's, it's you're with a team that usually won't do what you want them to anyway. So if they don't listen to you while you're alive, they're not going to listen to you when your tank dies. So, so call for vengeance isn't a big thing for me. Relaying is that'd be the next skill to get because that works with the communications. 
signal range of allied communications within vehicle's radio coverage. <coughs> and of course, there's all these the basic skills that every that every uh, tank crew member can have. So anyway, that's how I have this tank set up. And as I said, it, my own belief is you don't have to have a 100% crew is what you need. If you've got 100% crew in this tank, you will do well with this tank. You'll be able to bring out everything this tank has to offer, which is primarily, it's, it's, a, it's a medium tank. It's a medium tank, high speed, to be aggressive. It's an aggressive, offensive vehicle. Uh, that's the way I like to play it. It does have a gun that you can use to snipe with. So it's a tank you can use. You can use its speed to get to a good location quickly, see what's going on, set yourself up, and you can snipe with it. Uh, if you find you're in a bad situation, the speed and mobility of this tank will get you out of trouble quickly. Um, but this is not a tank that you should be sitting with. Um, you really want to keep on the move quite a bit. And uh, you definitely, it definitely plays very well when you play in platoons uh, of these tanks. That's where it's really fun. But uh, as I say, it's, it's definitely one of the keepers. Uh, definitely a tank. Um, that we need to have for tier six strongholds. Um, a good overall tank to have. All right, so let's get into some game. Let's get into some gameplay. All right. All right. Well, let's try this again. One of the reasons this video has taken so long to make is simply that every time I have tried to get in battles with this tank, I've had a couple of good games that I'll have to edit through, but you wouldn't believe the number of teams I've been put on that were just, oh, you want to cringe. You just want to cringe. I've just had so many problems. Like, here we go again. This is the kind of games I've been getting. Here we are, tier 6 game. We have no tier 6 heavy tanks. And the enemy's got three. We actually have no heavy tanks. The enemy has five. And I just don't get it. You know, it's funny how wargaming with World of Warships, they've gone out of their way to try. And make the matchmaking work in a way that the teams are, are fair. But here we are in this game. World of Tanks, which they've had out so much longer than World of Warships, and they have never been able to make the matchmaking work in a way that it would be balanced. And that's what we're seeing today. It's a trap! You know, you're really beautiful. I don't know, you're a tough guy, Jeff. It is. You want some? You want some? He's an insecure guy. But again, it is what it is. 
you probably it's a worse trap. than Jeb Bush. He lost, he had a shot, he choked, he choked very badly and he lost. It's a trap! I've been watching you for the last couple of weeks. I never attacked him on his look, and believe me, his place. May he rest in peace. You probably are worse than Jeb Bush. He's a dirty, rotten, filthy thug with a disgusting cap. No more Oreos for either of us, because don't feel bad for either. Unbelievable. I didn't think we'd win this one, this one. I really didn't. Their heavies did not work well together at all.
What a bunch of losers, I'll tell you. You are a loser. Right now, it's not letting me have my battle interface. Wonderful. Well, at least we won that one. Okay, but when I play the Cromwell, I like to stay mobile. I don't really use this tank to snipe. I will try to get to a location where I might be able to snipe at people, but the best thing for this tank to be doing is staying on the move. And that's how I like to play it. This is a map where I will tend to find a location. Now, I like to use the center area. Your assistance has been requested. People keep inviting me to platoon. It's like, no. Somebody has to come out. Now this guy seems to like to go to the same spot, and that's where I was heading anyway. So that's good. And we got this city in the tier five vehicle, or tier six, basically tier five tank and tier six set up as a tier six. And he's going to be a idiot. It's a trap! Thing about doing this, there was somebody over there shooting at me earlier. Oh boy. No, you're really beautiful. It's a trap! You want some? You want some? No, you're really beautiful. He is, uh, he's a little behind, yeah. No, no, you're a tough guy, Jim. Yeah, it is. We're gonna have to start looking at somebody else. Yeah, yeah, but these, these guys, guys weren't the only two. Yeah, I know. You no, 
Oh, you're really beautiful. He's an insecure guy. I've been watching you for the it's last couple of weeks. I'm a free trader. He's an insecure guy. You probably are worse than Jeb Bush. I never attacked It's a trap! And believe me, there's plenty of something. He's an insecure guy. It's a trap! He is, uh, he's a little behind, yeah. Ahead of schedule, and under budget. They're losers. They're just losers. I've been watching you for the last couple of weeks. He's an insecure guy. You probably are worse than Jeb Bush. Don't, just leave him alone. Let him shout. And that, that wasn't, wasn't a bad, bad game. game. Still, Still lost, lost money, money, but not, not a bad, bad game. game. But that's, that's the way, way I, I like, like to play the the Cromwell. Try to stay mobile in it. That's his strong points. The, his mobility. It's a fast tank. You can use it as a, an aggressive scout. You can use it as a passive scout. Um, it's a tank that if you need to get an important part of ground, make sure that, that uh, you're holding it for the heavy tanks and your platoon, you have a platoon of a couple of them, you can easily get where you need to be. If you find you're going to be uh, overwhelmed, you can bug out. You have the mobility to do that. Uh, so those are the things that make the uh, Cromwell great. You can play it. It has a gun that's accurate enough that you can play it as a, a sniper. You can uh, find a location, snipe people with it. But it really shines um, when you're in a platoon. Two or three of these, if you find uh, an enemy tank that's uh, isolated, you can zip in and quickly whittle the guy down and get him out of the way and go on and uh that's the advantage of this tank the mobility the firepower it's just an all-around good tank definitely one of the best tanks if to me i think it's the best tank in its tier as a medium and definitely one of the best tanks to have in the game it's it's an overall keeper
so, so there, there you have it. it. That's, That's the Cromwell, Cromwell. and as, as I, I said, said earlier, uh, one, one of the, the great, great uses is you can always go for this tier 5 gun for um, stronghold play. Or you can stay with the standard gun and you can run standard rounds and you'll be competitive with this tank in strongholds. You should be able to pin just about any tank that you come up against uh, at a tier, in a tier 6 uh, stronghold game with the top gun on here. So that's it for this episode. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got some ideas on how to use the tank. Hope it was helpful. And until next time, this is Herr Obras signing out. Auf Wiedersehen!